Well, just bring in Debo to say hi. I mean, you. I would like to see Gronk in that offense. We'll run a little 11 out there. Debo can be used all over the field. Debo, what do you think? Gronk on the Niners? Rob, what it do, man? Yo, what it do? I mean, George Kittle would be the best compliment tight end in the NFL to my game right now. We would compliment each other. So George and I, <laughs> we would have you out wide, Debo. We would have Ayuk. I- on the other side to the left with Christian McCaffrey in the backfield. I mean, it'd be 12 personnel. We wouldn't come off the field that that offense right there. We would dominate like no other. We, we would have to put some speed. We got to put some speed at F at some point, don't we? The speed where? At, we at, at the speed. <laughs> That's George Kittle. He'll play the F. He's got some speed. We'll talk to we'll talk to Debo after this. We have a lot to talk about. Don't worry, Debo. We already covered the Micah Parsons tweets. Gronk Gronk already let him have it. It's fine. <laughs> no, you guys still have real estate in his brain. That's pretty impressive. That's how bad you guys look. <laughs> we'll be job, back Debo. after this. Debo's Debo's pretending he can't hear us. We'll be back after this break. He's being very clever and smart. We love that. Debo on the show after this. We'll be right back on Up and Adam. You ain't on the team, but do you like Debo? Debo, man, I'm big, I'm big, I'm bad, I'm bad. Debo Samuel to the race, my goodness. I won't quit, keep on grinding. And he makes the catch. Man, I'm big. Debo Samuel joining us now. Usually we have him on Tuesdays. Lucky to have him here on a Wednesday. Rob Gronkowski was just on the show. Debo, how are you? Good, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for popping on. Uh, I know you've got a lot going on. Short week, big schedule, a loss. I was just talking to four-time Super Bowl champion Rob Gronkowski about it, and he said, you guys didn't need the win. You still have the one seed. It wasn't that big of a deal. Like, whatever, we'll fix it. How do you feel a couple of days removed from that game? Um, You know, um, after watching it a little bit, you know, um, a lot of people say like you know we needed the we needed the loss or whatever the case may be, but whether we needed it or whether we needed it, you know we wanted to win every game. Like you know um, we still got a number one seed, we still controlled our own destiny, and we just gonna move forward and take this day by day. There were injuries, there was sickness, there were penalties in this one. You know there were Sam Darnold switches, like guys in and out. Trent on, Trent on the sideline. I don't know if you saw that from the the broadcast. You were obviously on the field seeing that all go down. What what do you think like like in your words about the loss like what happened out there? Um, turnovers. Um, we're not gonna win a game if we turn the ball over five times, um, especially not three times in the first half. Um, and at at that point, you no. Know, um, at the end of the half, it's sixteen to twelve. But after having three turnovers, just to show the character and the team that we have here, um, you know, uh, we just got to minimize those turnovers and stay out on the field longer, and you know, um, sustain drives, and we'll be good. Yeah, and Brock Purdy's never thrown four interceptions in any game in his career, whether it was college or his young NFL career. So he does this, and it's one game, and it's one game, one game of bad turnovers, whatever, and everyone is out with pitchforks waiting for this young player to fall. And this, for whatever reason, it doesn't happen to other quarterbacks. Other quarterbacks get excuses. He has one bad game against 15 great ones, and he gets crushed. Why is that? I mean, it's the Niners. It's the effect that we have on everybody. You know, like, I feel like nobody want to see us win. And, you know, they all quick to point fingers when things don't go the way they're supposed to go. And, you know, everybody thinks that and know that, like, we're still the best team in the league. Um, it's just crazy how how much they try to, you know, harness or bring him down. I mean, the guy still threw for 255. It's just like, it's it's the NFL. Like, it's going to happen. And you can't you can't control how, you know, um, how tip balls find 25, 30 feet in the air and just giving guys the opportunity to catch them. Yeah, and some of that's exa- exactly right. When I was watching it and it was Christmas and everyone's having you know fun and you guys are having to work and it's like high, you know, high pressure, high whatever for Brock Purdy and everyone's just waiting for him to fall. I mean, that was just, some of that was just terrible luck. Yeah, I mean, we had tip passes in there. Uh, we had like five tip balls like the game before and didn't get, you know, didn't get too many. And we had a couple of tips this past game. It just wasn't falling our way. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, um, Baltimore is an outstanding team. You know, they came to play. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, we gave the people whatever they want. We gave the people what they wanted to see. But, um, you know, we didn't come out on top. But we just got to continue to move forward and hopefully see them again. 
Is there something that you learned from this game or that if you were to do it over, you would do differently or want the team to do differently? Because you probably, probably will see them again. Probably nothing at all. Just minimize turnovers and, you know, everything else take care of itself. How are you after a, a game like that? Like, it, you know, you, you have to pick yourself up. You have to get treatment. Oh, no, I think we might have lost Debo. Uh, um, like, what, how do you, what is this week like for you personally? Are you extra hard on yourself? Like, how does that affect you? Um, not too hard on myself. You know, I stick with the same routine day in and day out, coming in on the day out, day out the game and getting body work and stuff and just getting the cardio okay, back just to get ready for a next big game coming up. When you finish this game and you see inevitably or hear the Micah Parsons, that y'all are still in his head after he loses to the Dolphins the same weekend, which is crazy, and you're the one seed and he's coming after your quarterback, what does that make you feel? I, you know, it's crazy. I didn't even, I don't know like what was said or what happened. Can you inform me? Yeah, we, um, he tweeted this. He said, down 21 and their no shots or development throws should tell you all you need to know. And Cam Newton also tweeted a couple like, ha ha ha, I told you so kind of emojis, I think. First of all, Cam Newton what stopped texting my phone, bro. He was a fan like two weeks ago. Like, that's mad crazy. Like, you wanted me on your podcast after talking about my quarterback, which is funny to me. But anyway, uh, back to this Michael Parsons story. Like, bro, we beat you 24, I mean, 42 to like, whatever the score may be, like, like a long time ago, like I don't, I don't get why he's so bothered about what we got going on over here, or whatever the case may be. I mean, and I, I, don't, I, don't, Gronk, I, don't, Gronk. I don't understand, like you saying, like you can be a quarterback in his offense. Like I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand what you, where you going with that? Yeah, I don't know. They got a big game and an and awful loss. It doesn't make sense, but he's, uh, he lost thinks two he could. Yeah. I mean, he's keeping score of you guys, but you're the hunted, right? You're the ones that target on your back. Um, you do have some, some good vibes, and you are so complimentary of Lamar Jackson, who obviously did his thing. He's obviously getting the MVP love, but um, you and OBJ were dapping up during pregame, which we loved because I like seeing wide receivers, you know, hang out, show each other respect and all of that. And, you know, you guys together at the end of the NFC Championship game last year. What's your relationship like with him? Um, relationship pretty cool. You know, we talk on a daily basis, um, you know, uh, during his rehab process, you know, we stayed in communication and um, once the season was over um, last year, you know, I went to train down in Exos and he was down there training. So, you know, we stayed in touch then and, you know, um, I don't know why this keep going in and out, but, you I know, it's know just either. good to it's see okay. him continue to <laughs> continue to grow and continue to be one of the guys in his league. I'm sorry, you tell me, you just told me you talk to Odell every day? No, I said it was like once once a week. I say every day. Oh, I thought you said every day. I was like, what? Nah. That's amazing. Now you also, we have to talk about this. You popped right off Marlon Humphrey um, when he tried to tackle you. Does this make Debo your top five list of hardest earned yak ever? Man, what's so crazy? I, I think so. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> that got to be number one because like I don't, I didn't see him coming, feel him coming, or anything like that. Just like kind of caught me by surprise but I think if he if he wrap up in that in that situation he'll probably get a better lick on me on right there uh I don't you probably missed this Chris Collinsworth um on the NBC broadcast said during the Bills game last weekend that Gabe Davis has a little Debo Samuel in him do you agree with that I heard that I heard that watching the game that was crazy because my dog definitely was out there breaking tackles <laughs> that boy had a date yeah you think you should get the ball a little more huh you think Gabe Davis should get the ball a little more? Hey, man, you know, I ain't going to speak on anything. I, I ain't have no control <laughs> over. <laughs> they look good, though, the Bills. Nobody's talking about the Bills. It's very interesting. A lot of people were saying that the oh, Rams are so... I don't know. Oh, <laughs> hello, you're on TV. <laughs> Diva, who is that? Shout him out. No, I'm in, the, uh, I'm in the media room at the stadium. I don't know why the, the camera keeps going out like that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's upside. Uh, I don't know who, do you know who that was? This is my guy, man. I don't know what, yeah, we're in here freaking out right now, but I don't know why it's, the camera keep going out. I love it. Okay, the Chiefs, I want to ask you about the Chiefs. They lost their chance at the one seed. No, ch the Raiders won, it was a wild weekend. Um, actually, no, I'm not even going to ask you about the Chiefs. Do you anything else you want to talk about? What, what do you got going on? Washington Sunday, um, Sam Howell. Here, Sam Howell's not, right the, not the quarterback. 
Yeah, we here at work right now, you know, um, the Wednesday, the start of the week. So let's get rolling and get back on track, man. Okay, well, I, we can't even see you anymore. But Debo, yeah, did you have a good great. Christmas? Did Tyshawn, you, did Tyshawn get all the presents? Yeah, he got too many presents for a two-year-old in that line. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Did he get a dog? Yeah, he got his dog yesterday. What? He got oh his little gosh, dog I love yesterday. That. I didn't see any of this. This is amazing. He got a dog. We love it. Go beat Washington with uh, Jacoby Brissett, veteran quarterback, taking over, and he looked good last week. Um, the number one seed belongs to the San Francisco 49ers. Gronk thinks you're the best team in the NFL. I do too, and you're the best. And uh Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here. Do it now for the latest from Up and Adams.